Appendix 5 of Home Education Series, Volume 3, School Education. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Wayne Cook. Home Education Series, Volume 3, School Education by Charlotte A. Mason. Appendix 5. How Oral Lessons Are Used Though the part of the teacher should, in a general way, be that of the university tutor who reads with his men, the oral lesson also is indispensable, whether in introducing a course of reading or as bringing certain readings to a point. Oral lessons, too, give the teacher opportunities for the reading of passages from various books bearing on the subject at hand, a sure way to increase the desire of the children for extended knowledge. Some subjects, again, as languages, mathematics, science, depend very largely upon oral teaching and demonstrations. It might be well if the lecture, with its accompaniments of note-taking and reports, were cut out of the ordinary curriculum, and the oral lesson made a channel for free intellectual sympathy between teacher and taught and a means of widening the intellectual horizons of children. I had a few sets of notes of criticism lessons which have been given by various students of the House of Education to the children in the practicing school. These lessons are always expansions or illustrations or summaries of some part of the scholar's current bookwork. Oral Lessons Some Notes of Bible Lessons Subject Old Testament History Group History, Class 1B, Average Age 8, Time 20 Minutes. Objects 1. To so interest the children in the story of Jacob's death that they may not forget it. 2. To give a new idea of God as drawn from the story of Jacob's deathbed, God's abiding presence. 3 to give them an admiration for Joseph as one who honored his father and mother. Lesson Step 1. Recapitulate the former lesson and follow Jacob's journey with his family from Canaan to Egypt on a map. Step 2. Show the children how Joseph was the first of Jacob's son to visit him when he was ill. Draw their attention to the particular trait of Joseph's character shown in this story. Step 3. Describe in a few words the surroundings in which the events of the story takes place. Step 4. Read carefully to the children suitable parts of Genesis chapter 48, reminding them to pay special attention to the words of the Bible as they so beautifully express the scene. Step 5. While the children are narrating in the words of the Bible, help them by questions to bring out the important points of the story. Step 6. Help the children to realize how Joseph's love as his father affected his life, and how they should let their parents feel their love. Step 7. Let the children see that this family realized God's abiding presence, and show them how any family can realize it in the same way if they will. Subject. New Testament Story. The Stilling of the Tempest. Group. History. Class 2. Average age of the children, 10. Time, 30 minutes. Objects. 1. To try to give to the children some new spiritual thought and a practical idea of faith. 2. To bring the story of the stilling of the tempest vividly before their minds. 3. To interest them in the geography of the Holy Land. 4. By means of careful, graphic reading, to help them to feel the wonderful directness, beauty, and simplicity of the Bible language. In short, to make them feel the poetry of the Bible. Apparatus required. 1. Bibles for the children. 2. A map of Palestine. 3. Thompson's Land and Book. 4. Pictures of 1. A storm on a lake. 2. Galilean boats. 3. The Sea of Galilee. Lesson. Step 1. Ask the children to find Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 in their Bibles. Tell the story 
of the stilling of the tempest, keeping as closely as possible to the language of the Bible. A. Let the children find the Sea of Galilee on the map, gathering from the map some notion of the surrounding country. Compare with Lake Windermere. Show course of journey by references to verses 5 and 28 in the same chapter. Show pictures of ships used in the east and on the Sea of Galilee. B. Describe the tempest graphically, drawing from the children the reason for the sudden storms, parentheses, caused by the ravines down which the winds rush, and parentheses. Get from them their idea of a storm at sea or on a lake. Show a photograph of a storm on Lake Windermere. C. Try to make the children understand the twofold nature of our Lord. 1. His humanity, he was evidently weary, and 2. His divinity, his power over nature. D. Try to make the children feel the simplicity of the Bible language and the forceful way in which it brings pictures before the mind. There arose a great tempest. His disciples came to him. He arose. There was a great calm. Refer to Psalm 57. E. The men marveled. Try to show the children that faith is just another word for understanding, knowing. How the better we know a person, the more we can trust him. Draw from the children how faith is shown in nearly every verse of this story, but as far as the disciples were concerned, it did not go far enough. Draw from them that it is not necessary to be with a person always in order to have faith in him. Ask them how people show faith in all the actions of their daily lives. Step 2. Read the story from the Bible. Read it carefully so that the children will appreciate its literary value and see the vivid pictures which it brings before the mind. Step 3. Let the children narrate the story, keeping as much as possible to the Bible words. Subject. Reading. Group, English, Class 3, Average Age, 13, Time, 25 Minutes. Objects 1. Try to improve the children's reading by drilling them in clear and pure pronunciation. 2. To show them that by their reading a series of mental pictures should be presented to the listener. Lesson Step 1. Breathing Exercises Ask reason for the same. Step 2. Practice the children in consonant and vowel sounds by giving them sentences in which difficulties in pronunciation occur. M, N, N. A stricken maiden musing on a mountain was given from heaven man in mortal form. Final T. A just knight felt a weight on his heart and yet a sweet, quiet rest was present when he went to meet the light. P. B. A path of prickly brambles, bordered by pure, pale poppies, breathed peace between the broken beams. D. Touched by the hand that appeared from the cloud under which nodded the dead leaves. Parentheses. Notice the final D is sometimes pronounced like T. End parentheses. Step 3. Read the passage chosen from Tennyson's Sir Galahad, asking the girls afterwards to describe the mental pictures they have drawn. A maiden knight, to me is given such hope I know not fear. I yearn to breathe the airs of heaven that often meet me here. I muse on joy that will not cease, pure spaces clothed in living beams, Pure lilies of eternal peace, whose odors haunt my dreams. And, stricken by an angel's hand, this mortal armor that I wear, this weight and size, this heart and eyes are touched, are turned to finest air. The clouds are broken in the sky, and through the mountain walls a rolling organ harmony swells up and shakes and falls. Then move the trees, the copses nod, wings flutter, voices hover clear, 
O just and faithful knight of God, ride on, the prize is near. So I pass hostel, hall, and grange, by bridge and ford, by park and pale, all armed I ride, whate'er betide, until I find the holy grail. Step four. Show the girls a reproduction of Watts's conception of the idea, asking them in what points the poet's and artist's ideas coincide. Step five. Let the children read the passage. Subject. Narration. Parentheses. Plutarch's Life of Alexander. Part of the term's work. End parentheses. Group. Language. Class two. Average age. Ten. Time. Twenty minutes. Objects. One. To improve the children's power of narration by impressing on them Plutarch's style, as translated by North, and making them narrate as much as possible in his words. Two. To rouse in the children admiration of Alexander's love of simplicity, generosity, and kindness to his men. Lesson Step 1. Connect with the last lesson by questioning the children. They read last time stories illustrating Alexander's graciousness and tact. Step 2. Tell the children shortly the substance of what I am going to read to them letting them find any places mentioned in their maps. Step 3. Read to the children about three pages, dealing with the luxury of the Macedonians, Alexander's march to Bactria, and the death of Darius. Read this slowly and distinctly, and into the children as much as possible. Step 4. Ask the children in turn to narrate each narrating a part of what was read. Subject From Plutarch's Greek Lives Alexander the Great An Introductory Lesson Group History Class 2 Ages 8 and 9 Time 30 Minutes Object 1. To establish relations to the past 2. To introduce the boys to a fresh hero 3 to stir them with admiration of the wisdom, valor, and self-reliance of Alexander the Great. 4. To increase the boy's power of narration. Lesson Step 1. Begin by connecting Alexander the Great with the time of Demosthenes, of whom the boys have been learning recently. Step 2. Draw from them some account of the times in which Alexander lived and of Philip of Macedon. Step 3. Arouse the boy's interest in Alexander by the story of the taming of Bucephalus, which must be read, discussed, and then narrated by the boys. Step 4. Ask the boys what they mean by a hero. The old meaning was demigod, the Anglo-Saxon meaning a man. Both really meant a man who was brave and true in every circumstance. Ask them, what are the qualities which go to make a hero? Draw from them how far we can trace these qualities in Alexander. We notice wisdom, what a horse they are losing for want of skill to manage him. Perseverance, he kept repeating the same expression. Self-reliance, and I certainly could. This was justified by the fact that he could. Observation, he noticed that the horse was afraid of its shadow. Courage. Seeing his opportunity, he leaped upon its back. Prudence. He went very gently till he could feel that he had perfect control of the animal. These are not all the qualities one looks for in a hero, but as the boys will be learning all about Alexander next term, they will be able to find out for themselves what others he had. They will see, for instance, how he never imagined a defeat, but went on, conquering as he went. Parentheses. Hope. In parentheses. The name of Alexander has never been forgotten because he was so great a hero. Owing to him, the language and civilization of Greece was carried over a great part of Asia. Show map illustrating his campaigns. He tried to improve the land wherever he went. Owing to his travels, people began to know more than they had ever known of geography 
and natural history. Himself a hero, Alexander reverenced heroes, keeping the casket copy of the Iliad. Step 5. Recapitulate Step 4 by means of question. Subject. The Godwins. Group. History. Class. 3. Average age. 13. Time. 30 minutes. Objects. 1. To recapitulate and enlarge on the period of history taken during the term. A.D. 871 to 1066. 2. To increase the children's interest in it by giving as much as possible in detail the history of one of the prominent families of the period. 3. To exemplify patriotism in the character of the Godwins. Lesson. Step 1. Recapitulate what the girls know of the period briefly by questioning about the Saxon and Danish kings and leading men, making a chart on the blackboard. Step 2. Begin with the reign of Canute. Enlarge upon their present knowledge as to his character and deeds was king of England. And let a girl read the account of his pilgrimage to Rome. Parentheses, Freeman's Old English History, page 242. Parentheses. Step 3. Give an account of the early history of Earl Godwin, his apparently humble origin, his love of his country, his character. He rose by his valor and wisdom, was loved by both Saxons and Danes. He was merciful to his foes. He married Githra, sister of Earl Ulf, was made Earl by King Canute, and had Wessex given him as his kingdom. Put on the blackboard the names of the three divisions of England, with their earls or rulers. Step 4. The period between the death of Canute and Edward the Confessor's coming to the throne. Under Harold and Hartha Canute, Danish rule became distasteful, and the English longed for an English king. Let a girl read the account of Hartha's Canute's treatment of the people of Worcester and the conduct of Godwin and the other earls on that occasion. Page 250. Step 5. Edward the Confessor. Ask them questions about his early life and education, and how these affected his character and ideas. Was he a suitable man for a king? Not powerful enough to rule, Godwin became his supporter and adviser. Marriage of Godwin's daughter Edith to the king. Godwin's eloquence and influence over the people. Parentheses. Read from Knight's History. Page 162. End parentheses. Step 6. Godwin's patriotism is put to the test. Speak of his banishment with his wife and six sons and its consequences. William of Normandy invited over to England. Great dissatisfaction at misrule in England. The people resent the Normans being put into office. Let G. Blank read. Page 262. Step 7. Godwin's return. He and his family again received into favor. His death. The crime which had been laid to his charge. Harold, a worthy successor. Show from a map the divisions of England at the death of the confessor. Read from Lord Leighton's Herald, page 63. Subject, History. Group, History. Class, 4. Age, 16. Time, 40 minutes. The State of France in 1789. Objects. To establish relations with the past. 2. To show how closely literature and history are linked together and how the one influences the other. 3. To try to give yet a clearer idea of the social and political state of France before the Revolution than the girls have now and to draw from them the causes which brought about the revolution in France and at this time, 1789. Lesson. Begin by noticing the state of France generally. Feudalism was still in existence without its usefulness and with most of its abuses, and it led to the great division of classes, the privileged and the unprivileged. In both army and church, it was impossible for the unprivileged to rise by merit. All offices were filled by the privileged classes. These were exempt from many taxes. 
draw from G and S the chief taxes, Taye levied on property, and the Gabel, which forced everyone to buy a certain amount of salt from the government at an enormous rate. Step 2. Speak of the state of France in the country, showing what was the relation of the peasant to his lord. The land he lived on generally belonged to him, and return for which he had to grind his corn at his lord's mill, etc., had to give his work free on certain days of the year, and help to make the roads in his lord's land. Covey. Tell them something of the game laws and the intendants. Step 3. Notice the state of France in the towns, showing how impossible it was for a poor man to set up in a trade owing to the guilds and monopolies. The merchants, together with men who held certain offices under government, formed a separate class, far removed from both the peasants and the nobles. Step 4. The State of the Church For the most part, the higher ecclesiastics were hated and despised. This was not the case with the curés, for they were of the peasantry and shared their troubles. But the higher ecclesiastics were generally younger sons of nobles who drew the salaries of their offices and lived a gay life in court. The church also imposed heavy dues. Step 5. Show that these evils might have been remedied gradually, as in England, had there been a representative assembly regularly called, or any true justice. But as justice could be bought and sold, the poor man always lost his cause, and the pleadings of the peasant could in no way make themselves heard. They had risen just before this time, but unsuccessfully. Step 6. Draw from GNS the reason why the revolution broke out in France rather than in any other continental country. Because, though the evils in France were no worse than those borne by the German peasants, the French people had been awakened to the knowledge of their misery and their right to liberty by many great writers. Such were Voltaire, Rousseau, Diderot, Lavier, and Montesquieu. Get from G and S all I can about these men and their influence on history. Step 7. Draw from G and S why the revolution broke out just in 1789. Rousseau had written his works since about 1730, and Voltaire since 1718. The French had borne their lot under Louis XIV's strong government. Louis XV was very different. The evils of a despotic government were clearly shown by him. It was he who said, Après non déluge. Then came Louis XVI, conscientious and full of good intentions. Get from the girl something of Louis's character. But the great opportunity of the people came in the calling of the States General in order to raise money. Step 8. A short recapitulation of the principal points. Subject. Literature. Group. English. Class. 4. Age. 16. Time. 45 minutes. Charles Lamb. Objects. 1. To give some main principles to guide the choice of reading. 2. To give a short sketch of the life of Charles Lamb. 3. To show how the writer's character is reflected in The Essays of Elia. 4. To emphasize the fact that very thoughtful reading is necessary in order to get full pleasure and benefit from a book. Lesson. Step 1. Decide with the pupils as to some principles which should guide us in the choice of books, such as the following. Never waste time on valueless books. Have respect for the books themselves. Try to cultivate taste by noticing the best passages in any book that is being read. Time is too short to read much. There is a necessity, therefore, for judicious selection. The best literature can only be appreciated by those who have fitted themselves for it. It is more important to read well than to read much. The gain of reading some of the most beautiful literature while we are young is that we shall then have beautiful thoughts and images to carry with us through life. To get at the full significance of a book, it is necessary to dig for it. Thus, the essays of Elia are not only pleasant reading, but they are the reflection of the writer's character. 
All that Lamb was can be gathered from his works, and to rightly understand these, one must know something of the grand, though obscure, life of Charles Lamb. Step 2. Try to draw from the girls, who are already familiar with some of the essays, what they tell us of Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb was born 1775. His father was in the service of Mr. Salt, whose portrait is found in The Old Adventure of the Inner Temple. 1782, Charles received a presentation from Mr. Salt to Christ's Hospital. See Essay. The result of his education is summed up in The Schoolmaster. From 15 to 20, he was a clerk in the South Sea House. Essay. In 1795, he was transferred to the India House. He lived near Holborn with his parents and his sister Mary. Here took place the calamity occasioned by Mary's insanity. Charles's Heroic Resolution One learns something of the dream he renounced in Dream Children. His work at the India House was uninteresting, but such as left him leisure for intellectual pursuits. This distribution of occupation was means of conserving his mental balance. His literary work was all done in the evening. Candlelight in Popular Fallacies. The girls will then read Talford's estimate of Lamb. Letters to Robert Lloyd show Lamb's persistent cheerfulness. This cheerful tone is also noticeable in many of his essays. Mrs. Battles, All Fool's Day, My Relations, parentheses, Portrait of John Lamb, and parentheses, Macquarie End, parentheses, Portrait of Mary Lamb, and parentheses, Poor Relations, and Captain Jackson. C. Lamb died 1834. Step 3. Summarize by questions. End of Appendix 5。Appendix 5 Continued of Home Education Series Volume 3 School Education This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Home Education Series Volume 3, School Education by Charlotte Mason. Appendix 5. Continued. How Oral Lessons Are Used. Subject, English Grammar. Group, Language, Class 2. Average age, 10. Time, 20 minutes. Objects. 1. To increase the child's power of reasoning and attention. 2. To increase their knowledge of English grammar. 3. To introduce a new part of speech. Preposition. Lesson. Step 1. Draw from the children the names of two kinds of verbs and the difference between them by putting up sentences on the board. Thus, in the sentence, father slept, slept, as they know, is intransitive. Therefore, he could not slept anything, as slept cannot have an object. Step 2. Put on the board the sentence, Mary went and ask the children to try and make it more complete by adding an object. Mary went school would not be sense, but Mary went to school would. Ask for other phrases saying where Mary went, as for a walk into the town, with mother, on her bicycle, by train, etc. Step 3. Tell the children that these little words, on, in, by, for, with, etc., belong to a class of words which are very much used with intransitive verbs. They have not much meaning when used alone, yet in a sentence they cannot stand without an object. You cannot say Mary went in without saying what she went in. Step 4. Introduce the word preposition, giving its derivation. 
because these little words always take objects after them and because their place is before the object they are called prepositions pre being the latin word for before and position another word for place step five write on the board the definition a preposition always has an object after it step six let the children work through the following exercises one put three objects after the following prepositions in on over by with and from two put three prepositions and their objects after the following mary plays mother sits john runs three supply three prepositions in each of the following sentences the book is the table the chair is the door i stood the window four supply three subjects and verbs to each of the following prepositions and objects blank 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 in the garden blank blank on the floor blank blank by the fire five make three sentences about each of the following each sentence to contain an intransitive verb a preposition and its object the white pony my little brother that pretty flower subject german grammar group languages class three average age 13 time 30 minutes objects one to show the pupil that although the german construction of sentences may seem very much complicated yet with the help of a few simple rules it can be made much clearer two to draw these rules from the pupil by means of examples three to teach two or three of these elementary rules four to strengthen the relationship with the foreign language lesson step one begin by finding out what the pupils know of compound sentences in english i e that they consist of two or more clauses depending on each other etc and let them give one or two examples connecting this lesson with a former one on the arrangement of words in german sentences by letting the pupils put one or two compound clauses on the board in german and then giving the rule they illustrate rule dependent clauses take the verb at the end of the clause these sentences the pupils can probably give themselves step two get the old rule that the past participle comes at the end of the sentence with a few examples or two of which the pupils may write upon the board to compare those illustrating the new rule let the pupils put sentences on the board illustrating the new rule rule independent clauses the auxiliary follows the past participle sentences ich kir zurich when see echo column ist das kind welches verloren war ist gefunden let the pupils translate these literally into english and with the simple german clauses already on the board and the translation let them find the rule let them translate a few sentences into german to show that they thoroughly understand the rule step three treat the next rule almost the same way but have each sentence put on the board twice in different order and find the rule by comparing these rule if the subordinate clause comes first the principal clause takes its verb at the beginning sentences 
One. C. Gab den Armen will. We'll see got war. Two. We'll see got war. Gab see den Armen will. One. Er ging immer fort. Ob wohl er mood war. Two. Ob wohl er mood war. Ging er immer fort. Step five. Recapitulate. Subject. French narration. Group. Languages. Class three. Average age. Thirteen. Time. Thirty minutes. Objects. One. To give the children more facility in understanding French when they hear it spoken and also in expressing themselves in it. Two. To teach them some new words and expressions. Three, to improve their pronunciation. Four, to strengthen the habit of attention. Five, to introduce a new branch of the study of French and thus increase their interest in it. Six, to have the following passage narrated by the children. Lesson, passage chosen, le. Corbeau. August étant de retour à Rome, après le bâtiment de Acum, un artisan lui présente un corbeau à qui il avait appris à dire ce mot. Je te salue, César Vinc. Auguste Charme, acht sept oiseaux pour six mille écus. Un perroqui fit à Auguste la même compliment et fou ached fort cher. Un pie vent ensuite. Auguste le achète encore. Enfant un pauvre cordonnier voulu aussi apprendre un un carbot. Cette salutation, il eut bien de la peine à I parvier. Il se desparé, souvent il de se un arrangement. Je perds mon temps à ma peine. Enfant il résout. Il alla au seuil, attendre Auguste, sur son passage, et il lui présenta le corbeau, qui répéta fort bien sa lesson. Mais Auguste se contra de dire, j'ai as de se complimenter la dans mon palais. Alors le corbeau reste covent de ce qu'il avait souvent entendu dire à son mat. Répéta, j'ai perdu mon temps et ma pine. Auguste se mit a rear a ashta set was so plu share cut to le oat. Step one. Read the passage slowly and distinctly, stopping frequently to make sure that the children understand. Write the new words and expressions on the board and give their meanings. Step two. Let the children repeat the story in English. Step three, read the passage straight through. Step four, let the children read the passage, paying special attention to the pronunciation. Step five, have the passage narrated in French, helping the children when necessary with questions. Speak as much French as possible throughout, but always make sure that the pupils understand. Subject. Italian Guin Group Language Class 4 Average Age 16 Time 30 Minutes Objects 1. To increase the girls' interest in foreign languages 2. To enlarge their Italian vocabulary 3. To give the girls more facility in understanding Italian when they hear it spoken, and also power to express themselves in it. Lesson Step 1 
Tell the children in a few words what the series is about. Step 2. Explain the verbs in the infinitive by doing the actions when possible. Step 3. Let the children say the verbs in the infinitive. Step 4. Let them write the verbs on the board. Step 5. Explain by actions when possible the rest of the series. Step 6. Repeat each sentence several times slowly and carefully. Step 7. Let the children repeat the sentences. Step 8. Let them write the series on the board. Verbs. Voler escaters. Italian. Luigia vol escatarsi sul piano. Verb. A prior. Italian. Apre il piano. Verb. Solonare. Italian. Sono on a scala a dilgi a pareti. Verb. Studere. Italian. Poi studa un sonata de Beethoven. Verb. Voler impar. Italian. Che vol impar a ment. English. Louise wishes to practice. She opens the piano. She plays a scale and some are peggy. She then studies a sonata by Beethoven, which she wants to learn by heart. Subject. Geography. Group. Science. Class 3. Average age 13. Time 30 minutes. Scandinavia. Norway in particular. Objects. 1. To introduce the children to Scandinavia. 2. To foster interest in foreign countries. 3. To teach the children how to learn the map of a country by means of map questions. 4. To implant mental pictures of the characteristic scenery of Norway in the children's minds. 5. To show by means of comparison the great difference in the physical features of the two countries which are included in Scandinavia, although they form only one peninsula. Lesson Step 1. Let the children learn the map of Scandinavia, Norway in particular, by means of the map questions previously written on the blackboard, writing down their answers. Step 2. Ask for a general description of Scandinavia. Step 3. Let the children fill in the blank map on the blackboard. Step 4. Require the children to give the answers to the questions and, as they answer, give information in order that they may be acquainted with each place as it is mentioned and be able to picture it in their minds. Map Questions From the Geographical Readers, Book 4 1. What waters bound the Scandinavian Peninsula? To what land is it attached? What countries does it include? Note. Describe the government of Scandinavia briefly, showing that, although Sweden and Norway have a common sovereign, each country has an independent parliament elected in very much the same way as our English parliament. 2. Through how many degrees of latitude does this peninsula stretch? What other countries of the world lie partly in the same latitude? 3. Describe the coast of Norway. Compare it with that of Sweden. Name the four largest fjords or openings beginning at the extreme north. Note. Give the idea of the extraordinary way in which the coast is cut up and the immense number of islands which fringe it. Girls to notice how these islands form an effective 
breakwater to the force of the Atlantic breakers, so that within their boundary the water is as calm and still as a lake. Describe the rocky, almost perpendicular sides of the fjords, over which the rivers fall in roaring torrents. Mention the fact that many ships of the Spanish Armada were driven as far north as Statland and wrecked around this dangerous headland. The Song is the largest and most important fjord. It is like a long sea channel running into the country for a distance of 100 miles with branches right and left over which wonderful torrents fall. The sides are very steep and the water is very deep at the entrance. At the Solon Islands, at the mouth of the fjord, Harold Hardraga collected his force for the expedition against England. 4. Name a group of islands north of the Arctic Circle, the most northerly island, the cape on this island, the most northerly cape on the mainland, the most southerly cape. Note. The Lofton Islands are granite rocks, rising from the water in hundreds of peaks, with jagged and fantastic outlines. The cod fisheries of these islands are very important and employ a great number of people. Nordkin, which means North Chin, is the most northerly point on the mainland of Europe. Incessant storms rage round the island of Megaro, so that it is extremely difficult for anyone to land there. Lindersne means line nose. 5. Name five towns on the west and three on the southeast coast of Norway. Note. Stavanger is the fourth largest city in Norway. Its chief trade is in herrings. It has a very ancient cathedral. At Bergen, the houses are built on the slopes of the hills which run out into the deep sea. It was formerly the capital and is now a great fish port. Trondheim is the oldest capital. The name means home of the throne and is the cathedral the kings of Norway are crowned. Hammerfest is the most northerly town in Europe. Tourists go there to see the midnight sun. Read Charles H. Wood's description of the midnight sun from the geographical reader. Christiania, the capital of Norway, is not a big town but has a most beautiful situation. It is at the head of the Christiania Ford, which is studded with countless grassy and wooded islands. Most of the houses are of wood, painted white with green blinds. The fjord, which used to be very much frequented by the old Vikings, is blocked by ice for four months of the year. 6. The Scandinavian mountains nearly fill Norway, by which name is the range known in the north, south, and center. Name three or four of the highest peaks. Note. There is no continuous range in the Scandinavian mountains. The whole is a high table land which increases in height as we go south with here and there groups of peaks which appear like huge rocks dotted over the surface. These plateaus are topped with moors or snowfields, from which glaciers descend right down into the sea. 7. How does the position of the mountains affect the rivers? Compare the rivers of Norway with those of Sweden. Note. Describe how, in Norway, the rivers rush in torrents over their rocky beds, while those in Sweden flow more gently down the gradual slope of the land. 
Give the threefold reason, great rainfall, small evaporation owing to the coldness of the climate, and small waste owing to the hardness of the rocks, for the great volume of water in the short, quick Norwegian rivers. 8. Recapitulate with blank map, the girls adding descriptive notes as they answer the map questions. Subject. Astronomy. Group. Science. Class 4. Age 16. Time. 30 minutes. Objects. 1. To interest the pupils in studying the heavens for themselves. 2. To show where the planets may be looked for and how they may be recognized. 3. To help the pupils to apply their theoretical knowledge of the planets to explain the movements they can observe with the naked eye. 4. To exercise their reasoning powers. Lesson. Step 1. Get the pupils to describe the changes to be seen in the sky at night, and excluding the apparent motion caused by the Earth's rotation, find out whether they have noticed and contrasted the constellation of fixed stars and the planets, wanderers. Let the pupils tell which of the planets are visible to the naked eye and ask whether they have noticed when and where are to be seen. At the present date, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars, which are in Capricornus, Sagittarius, and Leo, respectively. Step 2. Draw from the pupils, if possible, the marks by which planets can be distinguished from stars. A. Their steady light. B. Size, in the case of Venus and Jupiter. C. Color, in the case of Mars. D. Position, relatively known constellations. E. Motion, noticeable after successive observations. Step 3. To enlarge on point D, let the pupils name the planets whose orbits are within that of the Earth and those whose orbits are outside ours. By the help of a diagram, blackboard, of the solar system, let them to infer from the nearness to the sun of Venus and Mercury that these planets are never visible at midnight, but only just before sunrise and after sunset. Step 4. To appreciate points D and E, get the pupils to recognize the advantage of knowing the constellations by sight. Show Philip's planisphere and refer to the zodiac, showing that, besides being the sun's apparent path, this is the region in which to seek the planets. Let the pupils find the portion of the heavens visible at 6 p.m. today and indicate both in the heavens and with respect to our landscape the positions of Jupiter and Saturn. Also show how Mars may be looked for in the south too about six o'clock in the morning. Step five, to enlarge on point E, show a diagram of the path of Venus among the constellations in 1868, Lockyer's Elementary Lessons in Astronomy, page 183, and get the pupils to notice how large a distance she traveled in one month in order to induce them to make personal observations, prepare them to see the planets sometimes move backwards and sometimes remain stationary. Explain this by letting one of the girls move round the table while the other watches how, with respect to her background, she appears to move first from left to right, then to remain stationary, then to move from right to left, and again to remain stationary. The moving girl, 
observing the other with respect to her background, notices the same phenomena. Then show the diagram in Lockyer, which illustrates these facts, page 178, and also another in Reed's Elements of Astronomy, page 137, which shows the apparent motion of one planet viewed from another in motion. A Picture Talk, Group Art, Class 3, Age 13, Time 25 minutes. Objects. To give the girls some idea of composition, based on the work of the artist Jean Francois Millet. Two, to inspire them with a desire to study the works of other artists with a similar object in view. Three, to help them with their original illustrations by giving them ideas carried out in Malay's work as to simplicity of treatment, breadth of tone, and use of line. Materials needed. See that the girls are provided with paint boxes, brushes, water, pencils, rulers, India rubber, and paper. Photographs of some of Malay's pictures. A picture book by R. Caddicott. Lesson. Step 1. Introduce the subject by talking with the children about their original illustrations. Tell them how our great artists have drawn ideas and inspiration from the work of other artists, have studied their pictures, copied them, and tried to get at the spirit of them. Tell them that today we are going to study some of the pictures of the great French artist Millet, some of whose works Mr. Yates has drawn for us on the walls of our Millet rooms, considering them to be models of true art. Step 2. Tell the children a little about the life of Millet, giving them one or two pictures to look at meanwhile. Give only a brief sketch so that they will feel that he is not a stranger to them. Just talk to them a little about his early childhood, how he worked in the fields, how he had two great books, the Book of Nature and the Bible, from which he drew much inspiration, how later on he went to Paris and studied the pictures of great artists. Michelangelo among them. Step 3. Show the pictures to the girls. Let them look well at them, and then draw from them their ideas as to the beauty and simplicity of the composition. Call attention to the breadth of tone and the dignity of the lines. Help them sketching where necessary to reduce a picture to its most simple form half closing their eyes to shut out detail, help them to get an idea of the masses of tone, etc. Step 4. Let the children reproduce a detail of one of the pictures, working in watercolor with monochrome and making their washes simple and flat, reducing the tones to two or three. Step 5. Suggest to them to study the works of other artists in a similar way and show them how the books of our catacot will help them in making their figures look as if they were moving. Subject, Fra Angelico. Group, Art, Class 4, Average Age, 16 and a half, Time, 30 Minutes. Objects. 1. To show the reproductions of some of Fra Angelico's pictures. 2. By means of them to point out such distinguishing features as will enable my pupils to recognize Fra Angelico's work wherever they may see it. 3. To show in what degree his work holds a place in high art. Lesson. 
Step 1. Give a short sketch of the life of Fra Angelico. Step 2. Allow time for my pupils to look at the pictures provided, namely various reproductions of Christ in glory, saints in paradise, angels, Christ as pilgrim, annunciation, crucifixion, noli me tangere, descent from the cross, transfiguration. Step 3. To notice what strikes us most in Fra Angelico's work, the exquisite jewel-like finish, the pure open skies and unpretending clouds, the winding and abundant landscapes, the angel, the touches of white light, the delicacy and grace of form, the coloring, the peace. Step 4. If high art is to be seen, in the selection of a subject and its treatment, and the expression of the thoughts of the persons represented, how far does Fra Angelico come up to this standard? He unites perfect unison of expression with full exertion of pictorial power. This will be illustrated by further reference to the pictures and by reading some passages from modern painters. Step 5. Allow my pupils time to look again at the pictures, summarizing meanwhile by a few questions. Subject. Design. Division Art. Class 4. Average age 16 and a half. Time 40 minutes. Objects. 1. To give the girls an idea of how to fill a space decoratively, basing the design on a given plant. 2. To show them that good ornament is taken from nature, but a mere copy of nature to decorate an object is not necessarily ornamental. 3. To give them an appreciation of good ornament and help them to see what is bad. 4. To draw out their originality by letting them make designs for themselves. 5. If possible, to give them a taste for designing by giving them some ideas as to its use. Lesson. Step 1. Ask the girls what is meant by a design. Step 2. After getting from them as much as possible, explain to them that a design is not a mere copy from nature, although it should be true to nature. Make them see this by simply copying a plant in a required space to be designed. Let this space be for a book cover. It will look meaningless and uninteresting and does not fill the space. Therefore, it will not be ornamental. Then show the girls that a design requires thought and intervention in arranging it to ornament the object. In the case of the book cover, the flower must be designed to fill the space in some orderly pattern and should be massed in good proportion. Give a few examples of this by illustrations on the board and show them a book with a design upon it. Step 3. Point out to them that the most beautiful designs and those that have had the most thought spent upon them are the most simple. Show examples of this in Greek ornament, greet honeysuckle, egg, and dart molding. Step 4. Tell the pupils that you wish them to make a design for a linen book cover, 7 inch by 5 inch, and if they have not time to finish to go on with it at home, if they like to carry the design out practically to transfer it to linen and work it. Step 5. Show the girls the flower from which they are to take their design and point out its characteristics, the general growth of the plant, the curves which it makes, the form of the flower and leaves, and the way leaves are joined to the central stem, 
These characteristics should not be lost sight of, but be made use of in giving character to the design, and treat it as simply as possible. Step 6. Let them begin their designs first of all by construction lines, and then clothe them with flowers and leaves, seeing that the masses are in good proportion. If time permits, the design could be tinted in two colors, one for the background representing the linen, and the other for the pattern upon it. Step 7. Suggest to them different ways in which they can make use of design in making simple patterns for their handicrafts, such as leather work, wood carving, and brass work. Subject, leather work, embossed, group, handicrafts, class 4, age 16 and a half, time 40 minutes, objects, 1. To cultivate the artistic feeling in the pupils. 2. To train them in neatness and in manual dexterity. 3. To give training to the eye. 4. To introduce them to a new handicraft. 5. To work as far as possible in the time. The top of a pen wiper. Lesson. Step 1. Show the pupils a shaded drawing of the design, also a partly finished pen wiper top, with the same design on it. When they have compared the two, they will see that the effect of light and shade is obtained in the leather by raising the light parts and pressing back the dark ones. Step 2. Let the pupils trace the design on the leather with a pointer. Remove the tracing paper and accentuate the lines with a pointer. This is best done with a wheel in a large design. Step 3. Damp the leather and with a molder press the background away from the outline of the design. Also, the dark parts under the folds at the top of the petals and round the center. From behind... Raise up the light parts with a molder and fill the holes thus made with a mixture of sawdust and meal, wet enough to make a kind of rough thick paste. Press away the dark parts again and make any ornamental lines, etc., while the stuffing is wet, as it soon dries very hard. For this reason, a little must be stuffed at once. In this design, about one petal at a time. Step 4. Let the pupils punch their background, or not as they prefer. Work on any half-finished piece of leather to avoid touching the pupils' work. Subject. Cooking. Division. Handicrafts. Class 4. Age 6.5. Age 16 and a half. Time, 45 minutes. Objects. 1. To teach the children to make little cakes. 2. To show them that cooking must have method in it. 3. To give them opportunity of thinking for themselves. Why certain things should be done. 4. To show them how they can alter a recipe to make a richer or plainer. 5. To interest them in cooking. Lesson. Step 1. Show the girls how to manage the stove for cooking. Step 2. Show them all the utensils to be used and let them arrange them on the table. Step 3. Let them write out the recipe from dictation. Step 4. Let them grease the tins first of all with melted butter. Then let them each weigh out the ingredients on pieces of kitchen paper and let them work independently of each other, the teacher also doing the same thing, so that the pupils may be able to see how to set to work without having their own work interfered with. During the process, ask them why certain things should be done. 
For instance, why t- baking powder should be used? Why the patty pans should be greased? Tell them if, that if they wish to make the cakes plainer, they could use milk instead of eggs. Or richer, they could add raisins and currants and spice. When the mixture is sufficiently beaten and put into petty pans, let the girls put them into the oven. Step 5. While the buns are cooking, they take about 5 minutes. Let the children and teacher wash up the things they have been using and put them away. Step 6. Let the children see for themselves if the cakes are done. They should be a light brown. Then let them place them on a sieve to cool and then arrange them on plates for the table. End of Appendix 5 Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. End of Home Education Series Volume 3 School Education by Charlotte Mason